Welcome everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. This is our 22nd webinar in the Survive and Thrive series. Um, we've been running these since the start of lockdown in collaboration with Gatwick Diamond Business. Um, really pleased to welcome today Anna and Omar, who are the co-founders of Blue Dot Studio. Um, they're based in London. Um, and also since the start of lockdown, have been running their own podcast series uh, called Digital Spaceship Podcast, um, which they're going to be talking to us um, today about. Um, so I'm just going to do a couple of the housekeeping bits. Sorry for those of you that have joined us in previous weeks and have heard me saying this all before. Um, obviously, unfortunately, we can't see you or hear you, attendees, um, but we would love to hear from you. So put any comments that you'd like to make in the chat box, which is at the bottom of your screen, um, and any questions for the panel in the Q&A. Um, we're going to be coming to those, so we're going to have a presentation from Anna and Omar, and then we'll come to the questions um, a bit later on. Um, but please do put those in there and remember to change your settings so that it's to all panelists and attendees um, so everyone can see um, what you have to say. Um, so this webinar is being recorded um, and will be shared uh, on our website at a, a later date. Um, yeah, without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to Anna and Omar to introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about Blue Drop and Digital Spaceship. All right. Well, Daisy, thank you so much for, for having us. Uh, we're very excited to be sharing um, our journey with the Digital Spaceship podcast with you today. And also we'll shed some light on how to start your own podcast, if that's something that you're interested in. Um, so my name is Anna. I'm a um, creative strategy design and branding expert. Um, and I have co-founded a digital marketing agency working with early stage tech startups called Blue Drop Studio, along with Omar, um, who's digital strategy and growth hacking expert. And earlier this year, we started the Digital Spaceship podcast, which is something that we're going to talk to you about today. Um, and also one more thing to, to bring up here is very recently we started a, a very, very new project called the Tech Startup Society, which is a community for early stage tech startups that want to learn about how to use the power of digital marketing to grow in the digital space. So um, you can see all of our social handles on here. So if you want to say hello, please drop us a line um, and we can jump into it. So. Today, we're going to go over our podcast, The Digital Spaceship, and then I'll share some insights uh, around the podcasting landscape, which is really, really fascinating at the moment, uh, and then share the tips on how to start your own podcast. And something that I would love to, to do um, and ask you is um, I would love for you to find and grab the screenshot uh, of the part of the presentation that you find the most useful. Um, and then uh, if you can share it on social and you can tag either myself or Omar and I'd love to see which part that is. So jumping into it. Um, Are you the... sharing your screen? I can't see. Oh, am I not? Oops, sorry about that. I jumped into it straight away. <laughs> One sec. That would help. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> All Good right. Stuff. Great. Thank you. Um, okay, great. Um, so jumping into the digital spaceship. Um, so we started um, the podcast in the lockdown. Um, essentially, at the beginning of the year, we were very active in the networking scene down in London, speaking with lots and lots of tech startups. Um, and then the the lockdown happened. So of course, all of those conversations came to a stop and starting a podcast was an amazing opportunity for us to really continue those conversations um, and also share them with the audience. So on our show, uh, we speak with founders, marketeers and creative stakeholders from tech startups. Um, and our main goal with it is to build a community. Um, the format of the show is very conversational because we think that um, having those unfiltered conversations with, um, with people from the other side um, is the, the most valuable way to really dive into the different journeys and share the insights and learnings that everyone gathered along the way. Um, so far, we recorded about 
30 episodes and we're definitely pr planning to to grow it even more um uh, potentially with starting a season two that's going to be focusing not only on the journeys of the founders and uh, marketeers but also showing the process of how you actually start um, a tech startup and how you grow it. Um, so at the moment we're live across Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify and a variety of other platforms so uh, you can find us across the different platforms. We'd love to hear your thoughts um, and um, yeah, see what you think. Um, so Omar, is there anything else? No, I think you've, you've pretty much nailed it. I mean, the, to give some context, you know, uh, of course, Anna and I have the, the digital marketing agency um, and the podcast that we have focuses a lot on marketing. So, you know, where you guys can get some value out of that point is that I think this is something that works in conjunction with our marketing agency. It almost sits parallel to the agency. Um, and the reason, one of the reasons why we did create the podcast um, in the first place uh, was so we could just carry on these educational conversations with other founders so we could understand the landscape of the tech startup um, sort of space and understand, I guess, a lot of what the, I guess, what's going on at any given time. Um, which gives us a lot more context to, I guess, improve our agency, understand the problems that people are facing, such as, you know, founders and marketeers. Um, so, yeah, I think that that's, that's probably all I've got to say about that. Cool. Um, and just before we dive into the details, I wanted to take a, a step, step back and say that, you know, having and running a podcast is one of the most fun things we, we actually have ever done. We spoke with a ton of super inspiring people and that have done incredible things. We learned about those different challenges that they face, not only in their business, but personally as well, because everyone comes from a slightly different background and, and also has been such a massive inspiration. So one day we'd like to start our own tech startup. Uh, so it's a good um, intro to the, to the um, whole landscape. Um, and of course the connections that we made through the show are really priceless and we cannot wait until the lockdown will actually stop and we can we can meet meet up in person and really continue um, helping and learning from each other. So let's now jump into the world of podcasting. Now before we can really uh, talk about the nitty gritty I wanted to bring some stats here because this is incredibly interesting. So at the moment Apple Podcasts has over 1 million registered podcasts, and that covers a variety of over 100 languages. To compare, two years ago in April 2018, they had over 550,000. So it's basically 45% growth over the time of two years, which is incredible. And to compare that with other um, content formats, such as blogs, at the moment we've got over six hundred million blogs it's a lot of blogs it is right um 23 million youtube channels so what that means is that for one podcast there's 600 blogs or 23 youtube channels so the opportunity to really create value-driven content here is massive and um and again it's just such a fun and easy medium to work with so it's a very exciting time so overall um Podcasts are, are fairly new. Actually, the term podcasting was coined in 2004 by Ben Hammersley, who um, has written an article called Audible Revolution for The Guardian. And if you look at the graph here below, um, it shows a really sort of high spike in growth across especially the last four years. Um, so it's a very, very exciting time. Now, of course, we have two main leading platforms that uh, distribute the content, um, and that's Spotify and Apple. Um, now, depending on the country, uh, the statistics vary slightly. For example, in the US, Apple is leading, while in Germany, Spotify is the leading one. So, you know, take this with a pinch of salt, but they are definitely two of the strongest and most popular ones. Um, however, they are not the only one. There is um, many more um, 
either publishers or content aggregators that essentially provide you access to a wider audience. Um, again, I've got some stats here. They slightly differ because they were um, created at different times and across different countries and uh, demographics. But nonetheless, the main thing to take away from here is that Apple and Spotify are definitely the leading ones, but you should not forget the rest. In terms of the demographics, um, this is a very, very interesting um, insight. And I've got some statistics here taken from actually the American audience, but still it's very relevant just to understand how it, how it all works. So 70% um, of the US population is familiar with the term podcasting and 22% actually listens to a podcast every week. This is really, really big. Um, in terms of the gender split, it's very much equal. But what's very interesting is that people who do listen to podcasts, they usually have a higher education um, and they also have above average income. Um, and they are very much avid social media users. So 94% of people who do listen to podcasts, they are also on social media very, very actively. <clears throat> Um, and taking um, a step even further, so podcasts very much, they appeal to the younger people. Um, and Sweden and the United States are actually the two countries that embrace the podcast the most. And as we can see on those different graphs, it's the under 25s that are leading really this conversation. Um, in terms of how do they listen, um, so the older listeners, so over 50s, they are twice as likely to consume traditional radio as well, while under 35s, they are the plugged in smartphone generation. So essentially, all of the podcast listening done in their group, or most of it is happening through either smartphones or laptops, tablets, um, and other devices. Um, and in the UK is actually 62% of that audience. In terms of where the people listen, the majority of them listen at home um, or on public or private transport. And then following that, um, when they are generally out and about, uh, taking exercise or, or even at work. In terms of when do they listen and, and sort of the average length of a podcast, that's typically between 20 to 40 minutes. And um, a very interesting thing here is that this is mainly based um, on the time taken on average um, spent on a commute. Um, and for example, Americans are much more likely to listen in a car while Europeans travel, travel much more uh, via public transport. Um, and there are other countries like Denmark that really like cycling, um, which add to this as well. In terms of the reasons uh, why do people listen, mainly it's to keep updated about the topics of personal interests or to learn something new. And for example, the older listeners, uh, they are much more likely to, um, to listen to keep updated, while younger listeners also want to look for entertainment and filling empty time. So now we can jump into the next um, section, which is how to actually start a podcast. And number one, it is starting with a concept. So the main question to ask yourself is, why do you want to start a podcast? What's your goal? And this can be to either build thought leadership in your industry, share an important message, um, generate leads for your business for a funnel. I'm sure there is a few other reasons as well. But the reason why you're starting the show will definitely dictate a lot of other um, pieces of the puzzle down the line. And for example, for us at the Digital Spaceship, um, the goal is to widen our network, to make new friends, learn about entrepreneurship, and mainly to inspire future entrepreneurs. Secondly, um, it's all about the audience. So creating a listener profile or just understanding who it is that will be listening to your show, why they will be listening to it and where, is very, very key as that will help you figure out 
you know, what's the format of your show, how long it is and when and how you should publish. Um, so for example, for us at the Digital Spaceship, we talk to uh, future entrepreneurs who are thinking about starting their own company and we really want to inspire them and give them um, information on how to do that. Or current startup founders, marketing or creative stakeholders who are looking to listen uh, to the insights shared by the peers and to find validation, inspiration or, or just new ideas. Um, then the next step is understanding the space. Now, if we were talking about branding here, I would be using the term competitors, but I think in terms of podcasts, it's not the case. Um, I like to look at this as defining the space where you contribute uh, with your conversation to already existing landscape. Um, and for example, for us, we talk about startups, but we also talk about marketing. So for example, other podcasts relevant to us are things like Startups for the Rest of Us, which is an American podcast talking to tech startups, um, or Social Minds, which is a podcast about specifically social media and using that to grow your brand. Um, and then once you understand this initial framework, you can really set the theme for your show and figure out, figure out what essentially what your podcast is going to be about. Um, so Omar, I'm going to take over, uh, give it over to you now and you can share what it is that we talk about at Digital Spaceship. Sure. Um, so I think, you know, to start off with the Digital Spaceship podcast, as Anna's mentioned, um, our vision for the podcast is primarily to sort of inform, it's to educate and hopefully inspire um, those who are, yeah, maybe they've still got something written down on a napkin somewhere. Um, they would just want to understand, is this something possible? Can I actually do this and turn this into a real thing? Um, and if so, how do I go about that? Um, all those who are already sort of going down that journey and just want to hear some reassuring words of advice from, I guess, peers that are slightly further down that journey than they are. Um, but in terms of the topics that we speak about, you know, we really want to speak to those two profiles or that audience. Um, so we, we decided to map out the journey um, as we sort of see it. Of course, every startup is different um, and these things can come in a different order. But generally, um, it starts with, you know, things like ideation, um, initial funding, um, hiring and how they built out their teams to begin with. Um, we talk about MVPs. Um, that's a, a term that's or something that's very important to tech startups and being able to launch um, and come up with a great product. Uh, and then we talk about, we jump into the marketing side of things. Of course, we are a marketing agency, so it's of interest to us to dive in and talk about these marketing tactics, things like branding, creative content. Um, and we, we take less of an approach um, when it comes to, I guess, things like product um, and technology itself. Uh, but then we move on to things like scaling and we talk about, you know, what that means to any specific company we're speaking to. Um, and we talk about things like the roadmap. So, you know, what, what do they have planned moving forward in the future? Um, and of course, then we dive into it slightly more personally and we talk about their journey specifically, um, which is where, you know, we think our podcast, or that's one of the, the core focuses of our podcast is because we, we dive into that journey and we, we don't necessarily look at things from a strictly quantitative point of view. It's more about, you know, what were the problems that you faced? How did you go about solving them? And how do you feel about that? And uh, is there any nuggets of advice we could distill from that journey and drop on the audience so they could learn from your experiences? Um, so I think that's, yeah, generally that's the structure we follow. Um, and I think it, it ties quite nicely because it paints a, a really good picture um, and ties back to, you know, the original problems that our audience maybe, I guess, facing at any point during the journey. Awesome. Thank you so much, Omar. And uh, once you have figured out the theme of your show, then we can uh, look at the next step, which is choosing the right content format for the show. So there's a few ways in which you can do it. You can have a solo show, so that's just yourself talking. Um, a co-hosted show where you have two hosts that basically have a dialogue about something. It can be interview-based or a roundtable, um, 
both of those ones are very much linked with having guests and one is just of course having just one guest throughout the whole show or then you can in the round table format you can basically have say five or even ten people if you'd like uh, it can be a documentary or docudrama where you present facts uh, and then add your own commentary for example or just purely a narrative or storytelling and as I'm attached uh, on in the previous on the previous slide, we have basically decided to do a um, interview best, uh, based show where we can really dive into those journeys. Uh, we're both the co-hosts, um, and we think that in that way we can we can have those unfiltered conversations, and that gives the the biggest value to our listeners. So once you have your concept. Uh, ready we can now talk about the branding and i'd like to start the conversation about branding from choosing your name um so first thing to keep in mind here is that people need to be able to find you when they are searching for Im information about the topic um make sure you do your research and uh check if there is not not any other shows that actually are using the name that you you want to have for your podcast you can be very creative with it, but in the same time, um, it might be confusing to start with if you don't have um, a significant audience. Um, it can be a very des descriptive name, such as digital marketing for SMEs, for example. Um, and in terms of using your own name, you can use, use your own name, of course, but again, I think it's... Um, important to have at least a small audience to start with because what you want to do is look at it from the listener's perspective and ask yourself you know is this actually bringing more value to the listener here or not um, then you can of course include the word podcast in your show if you want but you don't have to um, and one last point is that we recommend that you choose a name that gives you a, li a little bit of flexibility um, around your topic because for example if you want to um, create a podcast that talks about microphones maybe it's better to take a step back and talk about audio equipment so you can go into the different sides um, and themes if you would want um, and our full name um, actually is digital spaceship a marketing journal and that really gives the insight into the fact that we are really focusing on the journeys of the different startups and different founders or marketing stakeholders. Um, secondly, um, you're going to have to have a description or a value proposition. So you have about 4,000 characters to write this, which is quite a lot. But bear in mind that when you're actually, when people are browsing podcasts, they can only see about three lines of the text. So make sure that you really uh, are very clear on what the podcast is about in those first few sentences. Um, and one exercise that I really like to, to bring here is um, imagine that your listeners are sharing your show with their friends. And what would they say when they say, for example, oh, have you listened to this new podcast? It's great because it's the only one I found that, and then you can fill uh, that blank space. Um, secondly, um, we can look into the visuals. So once you have the name and you know what the show is about, we can start planning out the visual content. So there's a few things that you need. Um, of course, starting with the podcast thumbnail, which includes your logo. Um, then it's a good idea to have a Apple featured image design as well in case your podcast gets picked up. Um, and then social media assets. So of course, whenever you're going to be publishing an episode, it's a really good idea to use the power of social media and share that episode with the audience. Uh, so you can be very creative with those assets. Um, on top of that, of course, you can have social media covers, uh, plus images for your website, host pictures, guest pictures, um, the list can go on. And in terms of how to start actually designing this space, I would definitely suggest starting with creative direction. So first question to ask here is, is the show actually connected to your existing brand, whether that's your personal brand or a business brand? Um, that will then inform a lot of the design decisions like color schemes, for example, featuring logos or pictures of the host and things like that. 
Um, and then the next thing would be to do like a mini branding exercise. So you can start by defining your podcast attributes. So it's like describing personality and a good number of words to choose. There is about five. It will really give you a feel for what's the tone of the show and what do you really want to portray in the visuals. Um, then you, you have to understand the design and creative preferences and things to stay away from. So essentially this stage is about doing some research and finding things that work with you, that you like. And then also very importantly, understanding what it is that you don't want to portray or include. And from there, you can build a list of creative parameters. So listing things like, for example, we don't want to have blue. Uh, we want to have something very illustrative, but we don't, have, we don't want to have any full photography and things like that. Um, and the last step in here would be to build either a mood board or a stylescape. I like to call it a stylescape. And the way in which we like to do this is essentially we gather um, a collection of images that really paints the full picture of a brand. In this case, um, podcast, it is a mini brand. Um, so that will very much help you down the line when, while you're designing your website, for example, or any other pieces of uh, marketing communications. Um, and then the last thing on design is um, we, know, we all know what good design looks like and what it doesn't look like. We don't need to know why, but of course, in the digital space, uh, it's a very powerful um, space to be in, but you have to build trust and credibility. And design is num a number one thing to do this. So if you can work with a designer, I would definitely recommend. It's gonna actually help you in the long run and save you a lot of time. And finally, we can jump into the podcast episodes and talk about the details. So starting with the length and frequency. Um, so I think a lot of people ask themselves at the beginning, so okay, how long should my episode be and how often should I publish? Now, the answer is as long as you need. There are shows that are three minutes long and there are shows that are six hours. Um, and it really depends on what it is that you're talking about and who it is that you're talking to. In terms of publishing, it is a commitment game. So if you want to start a show, I think definitely make sure that you have time to spend on building your episodes and building the audience. So you can, if you can publish every day, of course, that would help you grow the audience very, very quickly. Uh, but of course, it's very time consuming. But in the same time, if you think that you're going to be publishing once a month, that's probably not enough to really build some decent traction with it. And every time you're going to publish an episode, um, it's going to have a title and the show notes. So just a few tips on, on that front. In terms of the title, I would really recommend to create like a template or at least a direction for how do you want to format your title so they are unified across the episodes. Um, and in terms of the show notes, I mean, there are so many different ways in which you can do it. It can be very, very long. It can be even a tr transcription of a conversation, but it can also be um, the main five points from the episode that you want the people to, to read and understand. And again, how to figure out how to do it. Of course, consider your listener and ask yourself what will be the most valuable way to actually um, provide this information. Um, then we can talk about hosting. So Omar, I'll give that over to you and you can take it away. Thanks. Um, yeah, so hosting is it's a really, really tough one. Um, there's such a massive uh, variety of platforms that you could host your, your podcast with, uh, essentially. I think there's a little bit of confusion, or there was with us when we first started researching, you know, what does podcast hosting mean? Um, do we not just host it on Spotify? Do we not just host it on Apple? Um, but in fact, that, that isn't the case. So essentially, it's, um, it's kind of like 
uh, your blog in a sense that you know you need to host it on a website um, and then it can you can send a link to that blog post anywhere else um, so pretty much um, oh oh sorry about that. the slides sorry I'll carry on um, yeah so Essentially what you need to do is find a platform where you can host your podcast and then you submit that podcast to a variety of, I guess, aggregators such as uh, Spotify or Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts. Um, so we uh, at Blue Job for the Digital Spaceship, we use a platform called Captivate.fm. Um, for us, it just seemed to be a really good fit. It gave us some pretty good um, analytics along with the, the hosting package that we have um, and there's no sort of limitations and it's a pretty reasonable price. Uh, there's, there's, as I mentioned, a ton of different platforms that you can go out there and, and use. Um, for example, there's Anchor, which we have here. Um, there's a lot of controversy over hosting with Anchor though, because it's like they host your podcast for free. Um, but I think there's a, a ton of strings attached essentially. So when it comes to the conversation of how can I monetize my podcast? I think they, they're pretty strict with how you can go about monetization. Um, and they limit you or I think take quite a massive cut of that. Um, so definitely do your research into what hosting package is the best for you. Um, as I said, for us, we use Captivate, um, and it seems to be working pretty well so far. We've had no, no issues, no complaints, um, from people who are listening and, uh, yeah, pretty good price point, but uh, I hope it's clear that, yeah, you, you have to host it somewhere and then you submit it to somewhere like Spotify or Apple podcasts. Awesome. And that leads us very, very nicely onto the next page, which is the hardware. Yeah. So um, you can sort of see the difference between my slides and Anna's slides, right? This one, <laughs> there's not much here, but essentially all you need um, are a pair of headphones and a microphone and maybe a computer as well. That might help. But certainly at this point, like you don't need um, to start off with your podcast a lot of people say, yeah, you need to have like all this amazing kit and all these like really expensive bits of gear. Ultimately, um, or in my, my opinion, up until before the lockdown happens and up until this massive boom in podcasts, um, podcasts, they started off with very low quality. A lot of people were publishing low quality, uh, like audio um, and conversations and people were still listening to the shows. Uh, then as it became more and more popular, you found some of those shows actually improved the quality of their audio over time. Um, and then sort of came about like this standard um, that people sort of, I guess, just started to expect from podcasts um, and they expected the audio quality to be higher. Now coming into this, this big boom, which means it's, it's open to such a massive audience and so many people are doing their own podcasts that's kind of like diluted a little bit. And I think people are, you know, there's not this massive expectation for podcasts to be perfectly produced. Of course, at any point, the better your audio is, you know, the better quality your show is going to be and the more enjoyable it will be to listen to the show. Um, but I don't think that it's something that should stop you if you can't afford to buy a 500 pound microphone, for example. Um, you know, you can get away with just using the microphone on your Mac to start off with. Um, and I think the, the main point I want to drive home here is that, you know, it's better to start creating a podcast and get something out there now than to wait for a few months, save up for a microphone, buy that. And then, you know, in three months time, you've got no episodes out and you've got to start from scratch anyways. Um, so sort of get over that perfection paralysis sort of hurdle. Um, and jump straight into it because it is literally um, if you're doing a podcast where it's just you speaking um, then all you need is, is headphones and a microphone um, of course if you've got guests on the show you're gonna have to find a guest um, but yeah that's it's, it's pretty straightforward in terms of hardware setup then let's say awesome thank you Omar uh, and then we can jump into the editing so once you've got some content recorded um, there's a few things to now think about so firstly um how do you plan the structure of your episode so on average there's always an intro the main content an outro some music uh it's always a good idea but of course you can build out um, the structure as you go along uh 
In terms of editing options, I'll let Omar again talk about that. Sure. Um, so the platform or the software that we use to edit the podcast audio that we record um, is Logic. Luckily, you know, we've got, uh, I've got an audio engineering background, so I understand how to use uh, the DAWs that are available to us. Um, you know, some of the other ones are like Pro Tools, uh, Ableton, there's, there's a ton of uh, audio editing suites out there. Um, but, you know, of course, with everything in tech, um, there's like a million and one platforms out there. And if th this whole podcasting scene has boomed over the past few years. Because of that, it's given rise to a ton of platforms that are specifically built for podcasting. Um, and, you know, there's just so many out there. So if you do have um, sort of a, an audio, audio engineering, uh, excuse me, an audio engineering background and you have an understanding of how to go through and edit audio, um, you can use something as simple as Logic or, or Pro Tools. But uh, if not, um, there's a ton of other software out there that will allow you to do a really good job. Um, I think a few people can log in, you can actually record the podcast on the, some of those platforms um, and then it will edit it really, really easily. Um, I think there's even automation tools out there. People are sort of driving the AI space when it comes to podcasting as well, um, which is pretty cool at the moment. Seeing a couple of those platforms pop up um, recently. Uh, but then, you know, when it comes to actually recording uh, the sessions, uh, we use Zoom. Of course, we started our podcast in, uh, in the middle of lockdown. So, you know, we couldn't go face to face um, and record in a room and have perfect control over the audio. Um, so yeah, platforms like, like Zoom are really good. Um, you can also, you know, have a platform like OBS on the side, um, open broadcasting software. Um, and even something like uh, as simple as Google Hangouts can work. Um, the reason we use Zoom instead of Google Hangouts is because it's got a really neat feature where every participant can record their own audio, um, which gives you slightly better quality audio. Um, but on top of that, if you are hosting something online, I would always suggest have whoever is speaking record on their own computer um, rather than relying on Zoom, for example, because Say, for, say it's me speaking and I'm recording via Zoom, it will record the audio that's been uploaded via the internet um, and, and broadcasted through Zoom. Whereas if I also record a separate file on my computer, it cuts out that internet um, transfer. And so the quality of audio is generally better. Um, and of course, if you've got a guest on the show and they drop out for three or four seconds, and you've got a raw audio recording from their computer, then you won't get that drop out for three or four seconds. And you'll be able to edit that in after you know, you've know received that audio from them. Um, so yeah, a variety of, of different tools available for editing and recording. Um, again, just give it a Google. There's so many options out there, but these are the ones that we use. Awesome, thanks so much, Omar. And um, to give a little bit of context, so for example, and uh, the structure of an episode for the season one of our podcast is we start with the key quote from the conversation with the guest, uh, then jump into the Digital Spaceship podcast intro, then to the guest intro, and then we go into the main content. And at the other side, we have the guest outro and then the podcast outro. And finally, we can... Um, now talk about marketing and building out uh, your community and audience uh, for the show. So as we have um, listed previously, there's a ton of uh, podcast publishers and content aggregators. And just by submitting to them um, via hosting, you already gain a really big access um, to an audience. However, um, we really recommend to build out a digital marketing strategy for your for your podcast and really create all of the relevant touch points such as websites or social media profiles if you need uh, that will definitely supercharge building of your community and you know podcasting is a very fun medium so it's a really beautiful value driven and fun content that's very very uh, good to share and basically be social with so in terms of the website um, now, depending on whether your show is related to your business or personal brand, your podcast can live 
as a separate page on your main website, or if it's not linked or related, it can have a bespoke URL. That really depends on how you want to set this up. Um, the next thing to, to think about is, so once you have um, figured out where to set the page up, what to actually have on there. So definitely the podcast logo or your thumbnail, the description of your podcast and links to any content publishers or aggregators that you want um, visitors to actually go and, and connect with. Um, any information about the hosts. And I always like to add a contact form. And depending on whether you have guests or not, still it's a good idea to have a very easy way uh, for anyone from your audience to get in touch with you. And one thing to really point out here is that this website is going to be a hub for your podcast in the digital space. And you're going to be able to link to it from, for example, your social media assets or any other content that you decide to create around your podcast. Um, you can also add more detail about each of the episodes, but of course that uh, comes with time and commitment restrictions. Um, and another thing you can add in there is definitely a sign up to a newsletter if email marketing is something that you're gonna wanna consider as well. And from there, we can talk a little bit about social media. So what's very, very interesting is that the number one way in which people find new podcasts is through friends and family recommendations. And then number two is social media. Um, and as we touched on very early, more than 90% of uh, post podcast listeners are on social media. So it's definitely a very valuable way to build an audience. Um, then in terms of the actual social media assets, so uh, what we do uh, is every time when we release a new episode, we do a set of uh, videos and, and images that we share across uh, all of our social media channels. Um, so we use quotes, we use videos from, from the Zoom calls, we use uh, images and, you know, you can be as creative as you want here. There's a ton of um, different platforms that you can use to help you with it. Uh, we, of course, we work with the creative suite, um, so we can be very bespoke, but there's really a ton of really cool templates that you can use and just make this process very, very easy. Um, and then before you start the podcast, really be ready to commit, because uh, in our case, we started out um, hoping that we'll get uh, 12 or 15 episodes recorded, but it picked up very, very quickly. Um, and very quickly, it became... Um, a daily task. So having that time resource is very, very important if you really want to use the power of podcasting to grow a community or grow your brand. And um, the last thing that I want to talk about is what did we actually learn from podcasting? So as I said at the beginning, it's been really, really fun. We, we spoke with a ton of people and we learned a lot, not only about tech startups, but running businesses, starting businesses, different industries. And we built some really beautiful uh, relationships from it. Um, one of the really interesting things as well is that the insight and the conversations that we had through the podcast actually inspired us to create another sister brand, which is the Tech Startup Society, the community I mentioned uh, just at the beginning of the presentation. It's a project which is very early on at the moment, but uh, nonetheless, very, very exciting. Um, and Omar, is there anything else that you want to add to this? No, I think we've, we've pretty much summarized everything, you know, um, definitely be aware that it's, it's a time consuming thing. Um, and also, you know, be aware that it's something that can work in conjunction with whatever business that you have at the moment or work underneath that. Um, but either way, it, it benefits, you know, it can benefit all avenues. Um, so it's, it's a really good thing. Now's a great time to get involved with it. Um, I think that, you know, the growth uh, of the industry and the amount of podcasts out there just basically says that there's a demand for this. Um, and it's, it's a great time to sort of get involved and get stuck in. It's, uh, it's easier than you think. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. And that's it from us. So thank you very much. Um, this is the slide I didn't show at the beginning. So you can find us online. Um, I've got all of our social handles here. 
Uh, we are always very happy to share any insight around uh, the podcast or anything to do with digital marketing. Um, and if you give uh, Digital Spaceship a listen, let us know what you think. We'd love to know that. Mm. Absolutely. Thank you so much, both of you. Um, I definitely found that very useful. Um, I've admitted to both of you that um, uh, we're thinking about starting our own podcast at some point in the future. So I'm sure all the attendees found that helpful, but I certainly did too. And we've got some questions that have come in. One, one of the first questions was, would we be um, or be sharing uh, the slides? So as long as you two are happy, I'll be sharing um, sharing your slides, contact details. Um, we have details of uh, the uh, your tech society as well that we can show people who might be interested in joining. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Texas, the, the Tech Startup Society is still, as Anna said, very early. I think we've just got a bunch of social profiles and a, a meetup space put aside for it at the moment. But yeah, um, follow along. What I would say for the, the decks and the slides, of course, we're happy to share them. Um, hit us up on, on social, um, you know, tag us in something, take a screenshot, um, and we'll, we'll be happy to send them over. Or if you guys through Sussex Innovation want to share them, that's absolutely fine as well. Brilliant, thank you. Um, so jumping into some of the questions we have here in the Q&A, uh, one from Michael Laffey. Um, we work with a lot of developing countries. Any podcast penetration insights for these markets? Um, not within this deck, I would say. Um, and off the top of my head, I wouldn't be able to tell you um, exactly what they are. The analytics we look at are specifically either between the, the US or the UK. Um, primarily within the UK. But I'm sure that information is, is certainly available, available for you. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. And then um, going back to one, some of the earlier slides, what's an Apple featured image? Awesome. So um, essentially, um, if you submit a new podcast, um, there is a chance for it. And there's a multiple sort of things that can contribute to it, but it can be featured by Apple. Uh, as new and noteworthy and then you basically have like um, you get given a real estate space where you've got like a wider tile and that tile is pushed like to the to the beginning sort of of the platform so it really helps you with um, that initial sort of building of your audience but how do Apple select them um, there is like a very vague explanation um, so Unfortunately, I don't have any more info on how yeah. to get there. <laughs> it's a difficult one. Apple are very, uh, a very tricky company uh, to deal with, I think, in my opinion. Hopefully, they're not listening to this and will dock our podcast. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, especially when it comes to apps and development and stuff like that, um, I think it, it's, of course, a combination of statistics and how well your podcast is doing, what the initial traction is within a certain period of time. Um, but from what we've heard from people who have been featured and a variety of other things, you know, it's generally how they're feeling on that day or that morning. And someone might just pick a name out of a hat. <laughs> and if it fits, it fits, you know. Um, but yeah, I agree with what Anna said. It's, it's tough to, to figure out what, what contributes to that. It's a bit random. <laughs> yeah. Um, so going back to the editing platforms that you were talking about, Omar, um, Richard has asked if there are any particular um, of the automated editing, editing platforms that you, that you had in mind that you knew of. Yes, there is one that we were recommended, but, you know, I've forgotten the name of it. Um, what I can do is if you ping me a message um, on any of the social handles, I'll be happy to, to sort of share a few of those platforms with you. And of the kind of, um, so you sort of shared a selection of different um, editing software. Best for a budget, would you say? Have you got like a top recommendation? Um, God, I mean, for us, we've, we've literally just used Logic. Um, I think a long time ago, I purchased that. Uh, it was probably cost around 100 quid um, or something like that. It's, put it on the business expense. Um, but I think, you know, there's there's a ton out there. I think there are a few out there that you could probably get your hands on for free if you've got a computer. Um, uh, I think Audacity is one of them in which you can record. I'm not sure how much you can edit in it, um, but that's for PCs. And then on Mac, um, if you're 
feeling adventurous, you can use things like garage band and stuff like that. Um, and then, yeah, the, the ton of actual podcast specific ones as well that you could use on a budget. Thank you. Um, another question here, which I think we've kind of covered, but just to kind of reiterate, um, when hosting, it's not just it's not just on your website that you're referring to, are you? So that's kind of like you need to create your own separate website and yeah. you need to be hosting elsewhere as sure. well. Exactly. So the way that um, we do it, so we, we host with Captivate. So we, we actually, we upload our show to the Captivate hosting platform. Um, and then that will provide us with an embeddable player that we can then copy and paste that embed code and put it onto our website. Um, and one of the other ways, which I didn't mention actually, that Captivate's great, um, is that we can very easily publish to platforms like Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Whereas I think um, typically you would have to actually go onto the Apple podcast platform and fill in sort of a, a submission form um, and apply to have your podcast reviewed by them. Um, but with, yeah, on the, the platform we chose, it was more of a like for the big platforms, at least like Spotify and Apple, um, it was like a one click thing where they just automatically submitted it um, to those platforms. But yeah, it's hosting is, is like a separate thing. Um, and then we sort of just copy and paste that embed code onto our, our website, which is, it's got a number of benefits, but you know, even from an SEO perspective, the more time people spend on your site, right, the higher you're going to rank. So yeah, it's a great way of doing it. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, and then one here from Matt. Um, I've been advised in the past to not necessarily create your own podcast at first, but to look for opportunities to be a guest on ex existing podcasts. Um, and what are your thoughts on starting one versus starting off being a guest? Have you both been guests before? Have you been guests on podcasts previously? Uh, I, I have actually, um, I don't think Anna has been on any podcasts. I know she's done some, some speaking, um, on webinars and stuff like that, but, um, yeah, I was a, a guest on a podcast, uh, before we did our podcast, but I don't think that the two should be compared. Um, I think you should, they're both sort of their own thing. Um, it depends on what your goal is. If you're trying to build industry expertise, um, quite rapidly uh, and also get your company out there and use it as a PR opportunity, then certainly get featured on as many podcasts as you can. Um, that will allow for, you know, your reach to, to skyrocket. Um, a lot more people will, will sort of hear of you and your company and then, you know, you'll have access to a variety of different audiences. At the same time, I think, you know, if you do want to start your own podcast, um, that shouldn't be halted by guest speaking on other podcasts. So I, I don't think you should compare them. You should do both um, if you really want to sort of push for growth. And how did you sort of source your speakers for your podcast? Were people approaching you? Were you kind of cool. searching well, we, around? Yeah, we, we so originally, I, I think we mentioned earlier, we, we just sort of expected um, to have like, before we started the podcast, oh, maybe we were struggling to envision having more than 10 or 12, you know, uh, guests on the podcast and being, you know, a digital marketing agency focused towards tech or early stage tech startups, we thought ah, it's going to be really difficult to, to get these guys to speak on our podcast. Of course, we've got, we're starting from zero. Um, so we went on Crunchbase and we looked at a bunch of people who had recently had investment, um, which probably means, you know, they might be considering investing into things like digital marketing and PR. Um, so based off of that, we loaded that list sort of into sales navigator on LinkedIn. Um, and we reached out to, we sent connections to each and every one. Um, and surprisingly, a lot of them replied. Um, and I think, you know, had we sent like a, a message saying, Hey, we're a digital marketing agency, you know, do you want to buy our services? they probably would have just deleted the message. Um, but because we approached them providing value and saying, hey, like we've got a, a PR opportunity for you. Actually, we didn't say that. We just said, we've got a podcast. Do you want to be on it? Um, we, we would love to, to hear what you have to say about your journey. Um, and yeah, we had an overwhelming response. So the way we did it was Crunchbase, LinkedIn outreach, um, and then we jumped on a call um, and established whether or not it would be a good fit. If they thought that they were happy with it, we took it ahead and did the recording. 
Thank you. Um, and one, I think we've got time for one final question here. Um, how can you discover new podcasts? Anna? She does sure. podcast research. <laughs> yeah, lo lots of that. Lots of that. Well, um, so this, this discoverability thing is actually uh, not very straightforward, but there's a few ways in which you can do it. So firstly, um, each platform will have a category section and that category section will have something like business, entrepreneurship, um, science, etc. It really depends on the platform how they have it. So Spotify has slightly different lists to Apple, for example. Uh, so number one, definitely start there. Um, and I think number two, um, just doing some research on Google and, and finding, finding different blogs and maybe um, media websites that talk about that. Because it's um, still, I think, that side of podcasting can be definitely improved because it's not actually very easy to to find that um, to find all of the podcasts about a certain topic. Well, I just jump in there and, and just add to that. So um, definitely, yes, look on the, the major platforms. Um, and of course, use Google. It's like a great tool. Um, but of course, one of the reasons why there's so many extra and, and like tons of these extra aggregators and, and feeds of podcasts that have come up is because this space needs a little bit of innovation and everyone's trying to bring sort of that fresh approach on how to find new podcasts. For me personally, um, one of the most underrated ways to, to search for things online is actually using the social media platforms, you know, and, and making use of hashtags um, and just searching for those and, and looking at feeds because you'll find like for us, um, as a host of a, a podcast show, we'll tag, you know, a lot of our social posts um, with things like podcast and digital marketing and et cetera. So if you utilize um, some of these social platforms as search engines as well, you can find like a lot of hidden um, or, or, not, or diamonds in, in the rough, essentially, um, in comparison to trudging through the multiple pages and going to like page 50 on Google, for example. Well, thank you both so much. That was great. That was the last question I think we have time for. Um, yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, obviously, for attendees, please do get in touch with Anna um, and Omar if you'd like to find out more about Digital Spaceship, podcasting, or digital marketing in general. Um, if you'd like to find out a bit more about what we do here at the Innovation Centre, I'm going to drop an inquiry form into the chat now. Um, and just so everyone knows um, who's joined us a bit later, yes, um, this uh, webinar has been recorded and we'll be sharing that with you later um, along with contact details um, for both Anna, Omar and myself. I'll be sending a follow-up email tomorrow. Um, so as you may know, we are now, we've now moved to fortnightly uh, webinars rather than um, weekly ones. So we'll be back in a couple of weeks' time. I'll be sharing details of our next webinar um, with you all shortly. Um, but until then, bye. All right. Thank you very much for listening, guys. Later, guys. Thank you, you so much. Some value out of it. Peace out. Bye bye. See you. Bye.